Good morning, Coco. How are you, hon? I'm doing good. Uh, Coco Brown is here. She is uh, going to be at the Improv tonight, Saturday, and Sunday. So West Bank of the Flats. Wow, look at you. You look good. Yeah, honey. See, somebody told me I was going to be on TV. Show. <laughs> yes. I mean, you're all done up. You're dressed up. You have. Yes. Uh, well, well, see, I'm black, honey. We don't come out the house unless we put together. Well, you look. You look <laughs> almost as if you're like a businesswoman. Like you're you're in an office, a CEO or something. I am, baby. Yeah. I'm CEO of my life. She got the heels on. Yes, you're honey. Yes. Wow, she's looking good. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Well, yeah, someone must have told you the story about, you know. The I sn- got told on the way here. Yeah. And that's odd because usually white women are really put together. <laughs> I'm shocked. Yeah, you know. Do, do, do you think that, you know, black women, do they leave the house and they all, they get done up? Is I mean, is this something that black women do? You know, I'm going to tell you, before I got, you know, married and divorced and had a baby, yeah. I would come out the house constantly just really put together because I was trying to catch me somebody. Yeah. Now that I've been through the whole rigmarole, honey, <laughs> trust me, you were getting a treat today because I would have been in here some sweats and some Because love. they always, like, if if you watch or if you see, like, a racist cartoon or or if you see, like, a stereotypical movie, uh-huh. uh, like one of the Wayans brothers spoofing uh, a black people, a black woman, <laughs> it's like a woman in, in a bathrobe with curlers in her hair or whatever and slippers walking uh, around yeah, or whatever. Yeah, we don't do you that You don't no do more, that. Honey, you don't. Not when you can buy hair. <laughs> <laughs> no, honey. Um, where Coco, where'd you where are you from? Where'd you I'm grow? I'm from Newport News, Virginia. Oh, okay. And yeah. and did you uh, did you want to get into comedy, or is no. it something you stumbled into? I totally stumbled into it. I got set up actually. A friend of mine introduced me to a guy who was a really big comic in D.C. when I moved there after college. And this thing I know, I'm hosting a comedy club. This is the Fat Doctor. Is that yes. what the guy's name was? Yes. Yeah. I I was reading a quote from uh, Coco, and she I, I I read just even the first sentence of this quote, and it said that she realized. I realized I had talent. I was sitting there with the fat doctor. And I stopped reading and I go, I have to find out about this. The the fat doctor. Yes. What does that mean? So this was a comedian? Yes, he's a comedian. He's like a, a veteran. He's an icon in the Washington, D.C. area. He's mentored myself, Martin Lawrence, Tommy Davidson, Dave Chappelle, Donnell Rollins, who was Ashley Larry on the Chappelle show. I mean, he's like an icon in D.C. If you go through his boot camp of stand-up comedy where he teaches you the business, he teaches you how to tell a joke, write a joke, um, you pretty much get knighted. I mean, he's that guy in DC. Why do you ever? Are there a lot of people that maybe are very, very talented, uh-huh. like this fat doctor guy who I've never heard of, mm-hmm. but you say like he's from the Washington area? Yeah. Are there a lot of people that are really super good, super funny, and we just don't know of them? Absolutely. They never pop for whatever reason? Absolutely. I'm going to tell you, there are so many people you guys haven't heard of that are way funnier than the people you pay to see. Why do you think they haven't gotten what? What is it? What's holding them back? You know, I think it's just, you know, opportunity, luck. I know with Fat Doctor, it was health. You know, he had, had dealt with some Go health figure. issues. Yeah, he dealt, with, <laughs> he dealt with some health issues. I would have never guessed. You know, he wrote for the Martin Show for years, uh-huh. and he dealt with some health issues, ended up, and then his mother got very sick, and he had to go back to D.C., so that kind of sidelined him. But he's, you know, trying to come back in now. He's, like, coming back to L.A., and he's doing his thing. I mean, his name is on the wall at the comedy store. I mean, he's an icon. But he just, during the time when he was about to really, like, pop, he had to leave the you know business. Well, it's like if football. I always think of this. It, I think of weird things. I get stuck in my head, and I, I, I almost obsess over these things. Like Tom Brady, who's a quarterback for the Patriots. Right. This guy basically, he, he wasn't a high draft pick. It wasn't he like a third, fourth, fifth round draft pick or something yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. He Barely got... Pl- he, Basically got into this by injury, right? And they 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 yeah, they, they went down. They they put him, him in, in as mm-hmm. and they, they they go. Our season's over. This guy blows, but we don't have anyone else. Right. And look at him now. Yeah. Now no one would have known who that guy was, exactly. and he just yeah. had some sort of moment. And I always I, and preparation. I, he came in to win. Yeah, I wonder yeah. how many other guys like that are out there in oh, the, they in are. the NFL that you just or in anything in comedy yeah. that you just. Exactly. It's, it's truly just opportunity, luck, you know, being at the right place at the right time, meeting the right person. It's like the stars do have to kind of line up. Yeah. You what, know? What were you doing prior to the, the, the comedy and meeting this <laughs> fat doctor guy and all that? Do you have a regular I, job? Or yeah. What were you doing? I was working in advertising for Ringling Brothers, honey. 
Oh, uh, Ringling Brothers. <laughs> yeah, corporate. They have a corporate office in Vienna, Virginia. And did you just say to yourself, this isn't what I want to do for the rest Absolutely. of my life? Absolutely. I couldn't take that three-sided cubicle. Yeah. I was, like, claustrophobic. And and what led you into comedy? Did someone say, hey, you're really funny? Were you working in the office and people would say, no. hey, you're really funny? Or what was it? It was, it was a friend of mine from college um, named Onyx. I have to always give him props because I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. And he took me to a barbecue. And it happened to be, like I said, the... Um, guy was like a really big comic in dc who was on the morning show there and it was his barbecue and they had already spoken that they were looking for a house mc for his new comedy club and he really wanted a female but there were no female comics that that i guess he felt were ready or whatever the case may be and he goes well i know this girl they hosted a lot of stuff for our fraternity when we were in college she's really funny you should meet her she's in dc so we ended up going to the barbecue i had no idea it was like an audition so at the end of the night i get invited to come and do his open mic and i'm like for what you know and he's like you know i have a comedy Club. I'm like, I'm not a comic. He's like, no, you're really funny. So next thing I know, I'm doing the open mic, and then like two weeks later, I meet Fact Doctor, and the rest is history. How much, so you really don't know anything about, at that point, about performing stand-up comedy. You've no. watched it, you've seen it. Yeah, I was a big fan of it. Uh, people will see stuff, and they'll go, I could do that, that's easy. I never said that, though. No, you I didn't. never. I mean, I was a huge Def Jam, and... You know, I, I watched all these, you know, that was something we did in college. We sat around and watched. We had Def Jam parties, you know, and, you know, comic view parties or whatever. I never thought, oh, I can do that. I just was one of the people, I was never scared of being in front of people. I had been doing plays and theater since I was 10 years old. So being in front of people on a stage never phased me. I just didn't know I could get up there and be funny doing it. So what, take me through the process then. So you, you... MC this night, then you meet this fat doctor guy. Yeah. There must, you had to learn now how yes. to do this. Yes. I mean, he pretty much had me keep a diary for a month where he said, I want you to write down everything that's happened to you in the last five years. He goes, I mean, just don't think about trying to make it funny. Just write down. And then we went through and he, we really literally pulled out a 30 minute set out of just regular things that happened in my life because he taught me a very simple equation. He said, comedy is nothing but simpl simplification times exaggeration equals comedy. Make it simple enough for them to understand, exaggerate the hell out of it, and it's going to be funny. Is it, what's the key? Is it, is it actually being funny, or how much of it is in the actual delivery Oh, of absolutely. The delivery is key. I know a lot of great writers who started as comics but just could not deliver the material yeah they didn't have the timing they didn't have the stage presence stage presence is key i know some great you know writers who started off as comics who just get on stage and they would just shrink and but they had great material but they couldn't sell it yeah but if they wrote it and gave it to somebody else it would blow up you know i've almost i'll go and i'll, I'll watch comedy sometimes and mm -hmm. I'll, I, i'm not one of these people that thinks i can do everything either i think things are a lot harder you guys are, are professional because you make it look easy just right. like if you were to come in and host a radio show or whatever and you had to do this for four and a half hours every day day in and day out it may seem easy well you just come in and you talk but it's it, you still have to engage yeah, people it's it's it's, it's the same right. thing uh but I'll, I'll go and I'll watch and I'll see a guy perform yeah. and I'll go, what he's saying could be funny, but the way he's doing it. Yep. And I, I almost envision like if I, and I'm, I'm not saying that I could do it. I, I'm not, but I go, if I were going to do that here, I think to myself, here's how I would do it. And I, I always think, why isn't this guy doing that? One thing that I don't get are these comedians that have the persona of, of, uh, they'll get up there and they'll be like very bored and monotone and this yeah. is my... Do you That's understand that at all? I don't get um, that. No, because I come from an era, you know, I came up in the game from like New York and, you know, Chicago, you know, D.C., where comedy is very high energy. You have to capture your audience. You have to keep them engaged. You know, you have a 30-second rule when you touch that microphone. Get the audience into your world. So people who go up there, and they're like, I, uh, I've never understood that. The few times I've gone on stage like that is because I was had cramps or something, honey. I was going through some things. I was in my middle of my divorce. I was having some labor. I don't know. I've been, Trust me, you see me acting like that, call somebody because I'm going through something. Uh, Coco Brown is here with us. She's going to be at the Improv tonight at 7.30 and 10.15, uh, same time tomorrow night, and Sunday at 7 o'clock. You you got divorced. How long ago? It has been final now for one month. Yes. That's it. So this is yes. still fresh. I am three years of a slave is over. So you got married how long ago? <laughs> three? I got married on 10, 10, 10. Okay. Yeah, so four years. Well, almost year, four years almost ago. Almost four years ago. Uh, and what happened? Why? Wh well, my husband had this disease called he wouldn't work. 
<laughs> and I mean, we really tried to fix it. I mean, we went to Burger King, right? You know, something about an application made him just die. You know, I don't know. <laughs> so after a while, you know, it just got to a point that I was like, okay, I'm going to let you stand on your own two feet. I'm not supporting you anymore. How'd you meet this guy? I met him through a friend. Yeah. she. He was actually introduced to a friend of mine. They, I guess, had no chemistry. That should have been my first warning. Because I know her. <laughs> and he saw a Not picture of me. Not good enough for you, but exactly. hey, maybe, maybe you know? I'll take him. Yeah. I should have known whenever you're giving me your sloppy leftovers. I just know, right? <laughs> and she introduced me to him because he saw a picture of me. And he was like, I like her. And she introduced me. I mean, he was a great guy. He was a great boyfriend. He was a horrible husband. Yeah. Let's go keep it real. Yeah. You know, great boyfriend, horrible husband. And how soon after you got married did you realize, I made a mistake? The day after. Did you really? <laughs> that quickly? I mean, the honeymoon was bad, honey. It was like one of the things when you sit on the honeymoon going, what have I done? <laughs> I mean, it was bad. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was the honeymoon. Some people, uh, now you, you had a child in this period yes, of time, right? Yes, yes. Some people, and I've always said on the air that this is a mistake, their marriage is going horribly but they stayed together for the kids. You you didn't even no, want to my, attempt my, that. My child was six months old when I walked out. Really? Yes. And I and I didn't look back. I just couldn't take it. I didn't want my son. I figured I am the first woman my son's gonna love, and the last thing I needed him seeing is a woman supporting a man. Yeah. So that's really what it was. He was lazy, for lack of a better term. Yeah. But, I mean, unfortunately, would, would say, did he it was cheat a midlife crisis. He cheat cheated on too. You? Oh, I found, he I found, did. I found out a lot of things after I left him. Oh, you did? So you yeah. didn't even find this out no. until after? Oh, honey, I found out some doozies. Did you know I found out that he was still married to his last wife? Oh, yeah. What? Bigamy is still alive in this country. Wait, so he got married to you <laughs> while he was still yes. married? Yes. How crazy? did he pull that off? Don't they do some we, sort of we, marriage license or something? The thing is, unfortunately, in Virginia, we got married in Virginia, and unfortunately, in Virginia, all you have to do is check a box. Are you divorced? Yes or no? <laughs> and he checked no. And then I found out, uh, like, a two months after I left him, that he was still legally married to his last wife. Oh, my God. We're sitting in the lawyer's office. I'm thinking, I'm going to get stuck with alimony because wow. I've been supporting this man. Yes, right. And now I've got the sitcom and the movie and stuff. I'm right. like, oh, man, I'm going to have to pay this man alimony or whatever. And my lawyer was like, well, didn't he play ball? And I said, yeah. She goes, them ball players hide money. Give me a social. <laughs> and we did some digging. And she called me one day and said, honey, you you, you home free. He's a bigamist. <laughs> He's married to someone else. Wow. Yes. So, wow. so he, what, what you say he played ball. What did he play? Football. Football. In the, in, in the NFL? Well, or in... he told me that, but we found out that was a lie as well. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> all I'm going to say to all my ladies out there, Google, honey, Google. Yeah. Don't be a fool like me. Do your best. USA Search wow. 1995. Find out what's going on. With this he man, yeah. must have been so good in bed, though, that you were he snowed really wasn't. to it. No, you just... no. I'm saying he was great. He just was one of those guys that he was a charmer. He, had a smooth, he, he charmed was a smooth everyone around. He had my parents. Everybody, I mean, everybody loved him. You know, yeah. he just sucked everybody into the vortex, and even me. And like I said, as soon as I said I do, it's like the, the light switch flipped. Why did you find out? After you leave your husband that he had cheated on you, did people know and they didn't have the heart to tell you? Or? I'm going to tell you how I found out. You, you never know who got your back on Facebook. Apparently, he was talking to some chick, and one of her friends was a Facebook friend friend okay. of mine. Uh -huh. And she happened to be on my page one day, and she said, wait a minute. She goes, um, she hit me in the inbox, and she said, I think your husband is dating my friend. Wow. And I said, excuse me? And she goes, I'm going to send you something and tell me this is your husband. So she screenshot this conversation they were having in her inbox. Oh, my God. And it was like, hey, baby, how you doing? It'll all be over soon. I'm leaving this woman. <sighs> oh, my oh, God. Oh, yeah, it was like that. Wow. So, And that's how I found out he was having this full-fledged relationship while I was like three months, four months pregnant with this other woman. Oh, yes, honey. Research, honey. Background search. That's all I'm going to wow. say. Background checks. Wow. Yeah. So now... You're single. You're a single yes, mother now. How single. old is he? You have a son or a daughter? I have a son. I have son. a son. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and how old is he now? He's 21 months, almost two. Um, is it tough? You know, no. Really? I mean, I would have to say there are moments that I do get a little upset for a hot second that I don't have a, 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 a good father to my child, as per se. But I've been really blessed, man. I have got this village of incredible men who are like my brothers, who the minute I left this man, swooped in and became like these surrogate daddies. Yeah. And then he has like you know, every walk of life. I've got white, I've got black, I've got straight, I've got gay, I've got actors, entertainers, lawyers, dentists. I mean, these are all my friends who just swooped in and became daddies for me. So my son is never going to lack for That's good because, yeah, that's important for yeah. boys to have a, a role model. I, I had a single mother, she was 17 when she had me, and uh, luckily... 
her father, my grandfather, was sort of, the, I guess, the main male figure in my right. life. But if I have one regret, it's that I was primarily raised, you know, my grandfather was around, but, but my mother and grandmother had the most direct influence on me. Okay. Now, the problem with that is... <laughs> And I, I want to be real. You don't want to you don't want to make the same mistake. Right. That you only get I got more of that sort of the girl thing. Like, you know, if if, if you get in a fight at school, they would tell, oh, uh, my real name, Shane, Shane, you turn the other cheek or, you know, you don't fight them, you know, mm. walk away or whatever. Mm. And I, I wish that I would have had a father like you did, Dieter, that would have said, pop him in the face. Pop him oh, in the no. Abs- yeah. I, I, I'm going to have a three. Like, you know, this whole bullying thing is out of control. And I've been asked how I'm going to handle this with my son. Because my son's probably going to be a big boy. Because his father was 6'4", 380. Wow. wow. So, wow. you know, he's going to be a big boy. And I know he won't be a bully. He's going to be a gentle giant. I can feel that in my spirit. But people have asked me how am I going to handle, you know, the bullying. I said, well, you know what? I've got a three you know, strike rule with him. And I'm going to tell him, the first time someone bullies you, hey, don't do that. Second time, tell a teacher, tell an adult. Third time, put him to sleep. Yeah. Knock him out. I don't care. If I come to school and they say we're suspending him for a week because he knocked this little boy out, I'm going to ask you one question. <laughs> Did you do the three strikes? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Well, let's go. Let's go to Disneyland. <laughs> because my child, I'm not dealing with that bullying crap. My son, no, knock him out. Put him to sleep. I gave you a chance. I gave you three chances. Now, the other, we were talking about stereotypes of black women earlier. The yeah. other one is that they can be real tough mothers uh, you planning on not putting up with any crap from your son I mean they'll no, I, I've, I I've, mean, and I've seen it it is a stereotype <laughs> I've been at Walmart before and a woman will just take off her shoe bitch I told you that <laughs> bam, bam. You know, they, they don't care you and then if, be if you look at them they'll turn what are you looking at you go, oh yeah nothing. seriously yeah. nothing I was looking at the shoe quick, quick to call Chopstick <laughs> services on you because there have been so many times that he's been like you know, he's going through the terrible twos right now and I, you know I'd be like little boy you better be so glad there's some white folks in here I can't tell that because <laughs> you know they'll call child protective services on you. But no, you know I don't want to be one of those mothers that's constantly beating my kid. You know, my father and my mother instilled a fear in me and my brothers very early on that yeah. we still have it to this day. My mother, I'm you know I'm grown, I'm real grown, you know. But to this day, I fear my mother. Yeah, it's something in her that will snap. I mean, my brother is 35 years old. You know, she beat him with a trash can, and he will not forget it. This day, he has a thing with wicker trash cans. Every trash can in his house is plastic. <laughs> so, so, I mean, you know, it's just, I think it's instilling that, a little bit of fear. You know, a lot of parents are so busy trying to be their kid's friend. They don't put no fear I in them. I agree them. with you, you 100%. Gotta some, you got to put right. a little bit of fear yeah. that, even though I'm your homie, we, I mean, we cool, you just know if mama snaps, it's going to be some consequences right. and repercussions. No, I agree with you 100% yeah. on that. Coco Brown is here with us. She'll be at the Improv tonight at 730 and 10 15 same times tomorrow night and then one show sunday at, at 7 p.m your first acting gig now i know you have a, a sitcom or, or your or, i'm sorry a movie that you are yeah with, uh, yeah you might have even already filmed it but yeah. your first acting gig mm-hmm. i think was on the young and the restless is that right that was my first acting gig that i got when i came to la yep. yeah yeah was young and the restless so you auditioned for this or yeah, how I does did. this mm-hmm. and uh nervous when you go in for something like that back then i was i think you know because it was kind of new as you know i had been doing coming back and forth to la you know doing the back and forth thing and then finally i just went balls in and moved out there with everything i had and it was one of the first you know auditions i had it wasn't even nervous about the acting it was like i was acting you know opposite victor newman and I've grown, you know, grew up watching The Young and the Restless. You know, I don't know if you, you know, your grandmother made you do this, but my grandmother used to sit me in front of the TV, pay me a dollar, and tell her what was going on in The Young and the Restless while she was in the kitchen cooking. Baby, what's Victor doing now? Grandma, he, he said Nikki a whore. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was me. So I had been, you know, a Y&R fan since I was a kid. Yeah. So to be acting against the, the matri- you know, the patriarch, Victor Newman, I was more nervous about that than the actual gig itself. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so. I just, it's weird because that show, that's actually still on. I got home yesterday. I normally get home during the day after the show. Young and the Restless was actually on. I've never, I've never even seen it, but I, I just thought to myself, this is one of the few, I don't know what other soap operas are still around. Most of them have folded. Most They're of them just, kind of folded, but yeah, you Y&R and the Bold and Beautiful are still going strong. You have a, a movie, a Tyler Perry movie yeah, coming, uh-huh. uh, coming out, right? Yeah, this March year? 14th. Oh, so that's right around the yeah, corner. Uh-huh. What is, what's, what's that movie? What's it's it called about? the single, Tyler Perry's The Single Moms Club. Uh-huh. And it's kind of like, you know, art imitating my life right now. Yeah. But it's a great film. It's about five single moms who meet, 
um, after their kids get in trouble at the same school, they all go to the same school, and they make us put together um, like a, a function, like an end of the year pageant to keep our kids in school without them being expelled for what they had done. And we end up becoming this support system for each other. Um, it stars Nia Long, Terry Crews plays my boyfriend, um, Amy Smart, Wendy McClendon Covey from Bridesmaids and the Goldbergs, Brian Ciprian, William Levy, all the ladies know who that is, that fine Spanish man, <laughs> Lord him. Oh, it was so hard to concentrate with him on set. And, you know, Sean Kerrigan, from, that's on Young and the Restless right now. Um, so I'm really, really excited about this movie. Of course, Tyler Perry's in it, you know, and it's a great film you know it's not your typical Tyler Perry it's a really good film tell me this you've been in another one of his movies too I I'm think, actually right? in a sitcom that he has called for better or worse that comes on um, own now it used to be on TBS but now it's on own what kind of guy is he Tyler Perry he's a great guy he's a perfectionist he's all about his business but he's a very spiritual man he's a very good guy if he says he's gonna do something for you he does it yeah and not like on most Hollywood people that say yeah 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 I got you and then you never hear from him again or they act like they don't know you if mr. Perry says I've got you he means it and he shows it are you surprised by Tyler Perry puts out these movies and they do very well at the box office mm -hmm. and every time uh, when I read about them in Entertainment Weekly or something, they're always, it's almost like a, they're surprised that this black movie was number one at the box <laughs> they office. They still don't realize that we are a formidable force in this world. Well, are they you, don't know. Are you surprised by the, uh, the, the huge divide between, uh, you know, I've never seen a Tyler, uh, me personally, okay. I've never seen a Tyler Perry well, movie. Well, let, let Tyler. Single Moms Club be your first. Uh, well, I'll check it out because you're here. I will check it out. No, but are you, does that surprise you that, that there is sometimes just that big of a cultural divide between what is uh, going on in uh, uh, black entertainment as opposed mm -hmm. to white entertainment? You know, no. Because, I mean, being a, a black actress, I mean, I would like to consider myself just an actress, but real talk, when I go in for stuff, I'm not sitting across from Amy or Wendy, I'm sitting across from Nia, I'm sitting across from a Taraji P. Henson or whatever, you know, I'm not sitting in an audition where it's just anybody, they're very specific when it comes to us. But what's so crazy is they wanna keep it so divided, but yet so many of these studios and pr productions have adopted Tyler Perry's way of filming. We shoot two episodes a day, four days a week. We shoot an entire season in a month and a half. Really? Yes, where a lot of these and So studios, it's a lot, a, a lot more economical yeah, to do it Yeah, and a way. lot of them are trying to adopt. I just shot, you know, um, Braddock and Jackson, which is the new Kelsey Grammer and Martin Lawrence sitcom that's coming out on Fox. And they have adopted that. They shot 10 episodes in a matter of eight weeks. And that's unheard of, because, I mean, I shot one sitcom, Two Broke Girls, and it took us three weeks to shoot one episode. <laughs> <laughs> so they can say what they want, but uh, you know about you know this divide. But a lot of them are trying to adopt his way of filming. And he he built like his own studio oh, and honey, stuff, he has right? An empire. I mean, yeah, yes. he uh, down in Atlanta or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess the guy goes, forget it. I, I want a soundstage. I'll build my own freaking soundstage. Yeah, yeah he didn't want to because you know initially you know he was supposed to go in cahoots one of the big networks, and because they weren't going to let him have complete control over what he put out, he said, okay, fine, I'll do my own. And boy, did he. Do you uh, do you ever think back? I mean. There you were. You're selling advertising for the <laughs> circus. Right. Now you're in movies. I know. No. That's. I mean, that's crazy. First really. time I saw the trailer for Single Moms Club, I was watching Keep It Up with the Kardashians. <laughs> <laughs> One of my guilty pleasures. <laughs> and I, it came on, and I was just on pause. I was just like, "That's me," in a movie. And then I'm driving down Hollywood Boulevard, and the billboard is up, biggest day on Hollywood Boulevard, and I'm smack dab in the middle. In this picture and I'm just like I almost crashed my car it was like it's still very surreal to me people ask me all the time like how can you still be so humble I'm like Hell, I never knew I'd be here <laughs> but I'm trying to stay <laughs> so, what are your are your parents still around yeah mm -hmm. what do, I mean what do they think about all of this they are just really proud of me and so supportive I mean when I decided to move to LA my parents threw me this wonderful going away party and actually gave me a little check to send me on my way to help me. <laughs> and I've paid them back tenfold, yes. They will not let me forget it. <laughs> you know, now I just bartered the grandchild. I'm like, I don't have any money, but I'll send your grandson for two weeks. Well, what do you do? You have this this two-year-old, and you're on the road. Uh, Coco Brown's going to yeah. be at the Improv uh, all this weekend. 
What do you do with the, your son when you have to travel and you go on the I road? I have a three-day rule that I won't leave him for more than 72 hours. So he's actually here with me. So I'm traveling with the nanny, the baby, and the assistant. This is like a whole production. Yeah, I, mean, I now have an entourage. Wow. Yeah, wow. it's crazy. That is pretty But crazy. I'm just grateful and thankful that I'm able to afford it. Because, honey, there was a time, honey, my child would have been just in a carry-on baggage. <laughs> 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 Don't move. Mama can't pay for this extra weight, you know? Are you... Uh, so the, after this horrible experience that you had with this marriage of yours, that, uh-huh. that you, you find out that your husband is, was cheating on you. You find out that he was still married at mm-hmm. the time he got married to you. And there's probably a million other things that he was lying about oh, that yeah. you haven't told us about. Oh, yeah. Um, are, you, are you able to move past that and start dating guys? Or, I have. I yeah. have. You know, I've been on a few dates and... Um, I'm thoroughly convinced that men over 40 who aren't married or have never been married are nuts. <laughs> I only have two years left. I'm 38. I've never been married. Do you have any kids? No kids. Okay, honey. No. You better do something. Come on, because you, know, you got to go in that crazy zone. Well, actually, you, I don't know. Am I 38 or 39? I, I, know this is, I know this sounds stupid, but last time I said my age, they had to correct me. They go, no, no, you're not that age. I, that shows that you're getting old. When you, I'm like, I don't even remember. Either that, you smoked a lot of weed in your, <laughs> in your 20s, baby. I'm, 30, I'm going to be 39 in September. What's right? your birthday? Okay. 19, September 21st, 1975. Oh, you're a Libra. Virgo, Virgo. Virgo, you got yeah. at cuss. Okay. Are, right. are we compatible then? What are you? I'm a Libra. Yeah. Libra's the only sign. The only sign that I am not compatible with is a Cancer, and I married one, and I learned very quickly. Yeah. That's the one sign, and you stay clear. So you and I could have a future together, perhaps. Possibly. How's your credit? <laughs> good, good. It's good. Your credit's yeah, good. Oh, yeah. honey, we could make it. I'd even see. And, and after you got a job, you, you probably <laughs> even have more money than me. I'd sign prenups, whatever. I, I for real. Yes. My friends keep telling me to get a white boy. They do. They told me it's time for me to jump ship. <laughs> You know, just let the whole slave thing go. Have you ever slept? <laughs> have you ever slept with a white man? I have. You have. Yeah. Did, did, have you found any difference between black men and white men? Oh yes. W- what? Like, what's the difference? Um, the biggest difference is um, no where, pun intended. No pun intended. You know, <laughs> and that that myth ain't true, honey, because I've been fortunate. But <laughs> but no, the one difference I found out is that you know, um, sometimes and, and and black men, please don't be mad at me, but you take our confidence and our um, strength as intimidated intimidating or they think that we have attitude or mm. do we think we're better than you or it's a competition thing the, the 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 two white men i've dated in my whole life found it to be extremely sexy and attractive that i really had this confidence about myself and i was very strong and i knew where i was going and what i was doing and i voiced my opinion i never had arguments with these two men because i could have a discussion with them mm-hmm. and they didn't take it personal mm. they didn't go what do you mean you're trying to say and, and that's the one thing i've noticed that the difference between white men is that they like my strength they say what i can you can hold you you can hold all this down and i don't have to i don't have this weakness or i don't have this woman going well i need you to tell me what to do <laughs> no i'm like i got this boo gone do what you gotta do they, they found that attractive so that's the one difference i found so you are able to go back and jump back into dating it and took stuff me a minute like it took me a minute it took me because i would i would yeah. assume if you uh, for a woman who or anyone a guy a flip side thing, that same right. thing can happen to, to men too but mm. that you would have some trust issues and especially now so. now that you are getting more and more successful in your career i mean you know, movies yeah. and things like that mm-hmm. uh, you now th- that adds a, a layer of complexity to oh, dating and relationships time, because now i don't know if they want me or right. what I, it, trust me that gold digging thing goes both ways right i've met a lot of men who want a sugar mama Right. You know, who are looking for a woman to take care of them. And they see me, they're like, ooh, she a single mom, so she must be desperate. No, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not, honey. Shoot. You know, <laughs> but, you know, um, that's, the, that's the element now that's been added on to everything else. Do you want me for me or what I can do for you? A lot of them hang themselves very quickly because they'll say stuff like, you know, can I go with you to the premiere? And I'm like, mm mm-hmm. You kind of know. Can I meet Tyler Perry? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's sort of a red flag. You get it to him? No. Right, right. You know, so they kind of hang themselves pretty quickly. Right. You know, and then you got the ones who are the the complete opposite. I don't want to be nowhere you at. I'll just be home. Mm -hmm, (laughs) Not working, right? Well, (laughs) it would be tough to date someone like who's going to be in a movie. They're going to be on the red carpet, that kind of stuff. For a man, if you're dating someone who's not in the entertainment industry and it's just it some, be some guy, I'm sure. right? I, 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 to have someone who overshadows you and yeah. and makes more money than you, and and when when you go out, people want to talk to your wife and not you. Mm-hmm. 
to a man that can be, very intimidating. be hurtful to the ego, yeah. I oh, think. Oh, yeah, because you guys' egos are very fragile. Yeah. Very. Well, they are. <laughs> we put up a good show, but... Yeah, but they're very you know, fragile. Yeah, I mean, we know? try to act macho. So are you, do you try to date people in the entertainment industry or just... Guys, that the you only meet. problem with dating people in the industry, entertainment industry, he would have to be on a complete opposite playing field. Like if I'm a stand-up comic and an actress, he'd have to be like a musician. Yeah. Or you know something because otherwise you're going to compete eventually. You know, my ex-husband was one, an aspiring actor, and when my career began to blossom and his wasn't going anywhere, that became that started the real drama and the competition, right. and the envy and the jealousy, and it got sure. kind of ugly. Right. So it would have to be somebody who totally, we understand the business, but it may be a different aspect of the business. Right, right. You know, and he's got to have a life of his own. Like, for instance, a very successful syndicated radio host. Exactly. <laughs> I know where he is during the day. You know, yeah, when you come home, yeah. I have you a sandwich ready, baby. Coco's here all weekend. <laughs> who knows? I might be able to strike something up right. with her. Right. Uh, and you know, beige babies are in now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready for all that, though. I mean, that seems but like. But baby, a, look at me! I'm holding it all down I'm, by myself. I, I mean, love. I just asked for the check to come home. See, you had a you had a, a child, first child, at the yes. age of 40 years old. Yeah. That's a lot later than a lot of people. I'm I'm 38, and I, first of all, I love kids. Love them. Okay. I, I think it's so. I I think it's great and fun. To like teach kids stuff mm -hmm. and sort of you know like when they're two your kid you know st start explaining things to them because that's what my mom and grandparents did with me they really explained things to me and they mm -hmm. they didn't treat me a lot of parents and adults treat kids as if they're imbeciles <laughs> and they're not right. and uh, uh, so I I love kids the and I I wonder if I am going to regret not having kids if I don't. If I don't have them, I think I probably well, the good would. Thing is you're but, a man. You can have kids the day you die. But there's so much work. That's it's what scares me. Yeah, That's everything you do shapes this person. And I, mean, I, I know that I'm not the kind of guy like waking up <laughs> at three in the morning to feed a baby or something. Like I, I just I know that in my mind I'd go, Oh my God, this is misery. I can't believe I'm doing this. I, you know, but it's not because when you look down at that little face and it's yours. So when it's yours, it's different. It's different. I think if it was somebody else's, I might be like, <laughs> you know, and I used to babysit my nieces. I'm like, you all right, you know. But well, dumb, you're shaking my phone screener back there. You're shaking your head. You, uh, you were saying yeah, no, have, you won't regret not have having three kids. Ki I have three kids, okay. Coco, by yeah. two different women, and Ooh, uh, you're black. <laughs> huh, I, you must be half black. <laughs> they do say I'm an NBA player a lot okay, of times. Okay, all right, so. okay. <laughs> Um, but uh, yeah, no, Rover. Enjoy your no children life. Enjoy it. You have a yacht. You have a nice home. You have a yacht. Nobody ruining your home. Nobody really? ruining your boat. Nothing. <laughs> Just enjoy your life. You go where you want. I when travel. You want. Like that's see. That's out the window. I man. only do. I love to Ooh. travel, Coco. Uh -huh. And I only babies do it, get passports. Well, I only do it like once a year. That's what so, nanny's for. So, but but I always think that's the other thing about like if I have a, a, a child. Yeah. Like I love to go overseas and to travel. I, I just I, that's one of my favorite things is travel. There's no spontaneity. We have a, no, we that's have a it. There's no. no There's when you have a nanny. If, 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 <laughs> a nanny. Three kids I'd have to one. sell the yacht if I want to get a nanny. You know. I mean, I, you have a yacht. I'm ovulating. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Well, see, well, she she <laughs> likes you. Sparks are flying I here. I've never with, had with a man with a coat. boat before. <laughs> Feeling some type of way right now. <laughs> uh, but well, listen, Coco, yes. I I appreciate you coming in. This movie comes out the, the Tyler Perry March fourteenth. March fourteenth. Yeah. Uh, Coco's gonna be at the Improv tonight at seven thirty and ten fifteen. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow at seven thirty and ten fifteen, mm -hmm. and uh, Sunday at seven o'clock. I haven't seen your stand up, but I'm I'm like I, come on, see me, baby. I uh, I'm very because I love your energy, uh -oh. and you have she just has. I mean, there's something. It's the exact opposite. I'm not bashing Natasha Leggero or whatever, <laughs> but this was a very bizarre thing. That I happened heard on the way today. here. Well, you know, women can be very touchy when it comes to our appearance. Well, and if I, we don't feel like we're up to par and how we put ourselves out there, and if she's single, I get I, it. I, well, I told her. After you know, after in the hallway, she did apologize. I will say that yeah. she did apologize yeah. in the hallway. But you know, she's like, I I don't want to. You know, I, I didn't know I was going to be on TV and I look bad. And then a casting director is going to see me on YouTube and uh, you know they're going to judge me on the the the, the bad lighting and all, all this kind of stuff. Aww. And and so I explained to her. I go, yeah, but what you did now. Now it's kind of worse. Now that's yeah. the kind of stuff. It's like the paparazzi. It's like if Kanye West just got in his car and drove away. 
he would not get all of the attention. But when he th beats up photographers in right. Ag's Bazaar, that only gets more people to come and oh, want to film you. So that might, so that might, but the, you know, it, it, it's a double edged sword in this business. Her behavior may get her that role now. Yeah, right. You know, it might be a casting where they say we want the bitch, yeah. <laughs> and she gets the role because of that. So, I mean, it's a double-edged sword, you know. And they might look at me right now and go, "Oh, we need a black mama." <laughs> you know, it just—you never know. Do people tell you? Now, I'm looking at you. Sometimes when I'm, only, I'm only getting from here up because the microphone mm -hmm. is in front of you. Mm -hmm. Oprah Winfrey. Do people? Really? Say, yes, yes. No one ever says you look like Oprah. No. Oh, but I take it as a compliment, honey. If I can have her bank account, child, I just want to go through her couch. There's probably ten grand in spare change in her couch right now. <laughs> I ran into. I actually met Oprah, and yeah. she was very nice. She, was she is. I'm actually going to see her next week. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm she's, going to an event, and she's there, and I'm, I'm excited. She, she was nice. She was. I mean, I didn't like sit and have a chit chat with her. She's very her, but, nice. You know, she's very nice. That that has to be. Uh, I mean, you have a, a level of fame, but I mean, when it comes to Oprah. something like Oprah, oh, the first or, time or I met her, I peed like on that. myself a little bit. I did. <laughs> Could you imagine your whole life uh, if you're like one of these guys, and we, like we mentioned, Kanye West or uh -huh. Oprah or s some super A-list celebrity? Yeah. Would Would you do you want to get to that level? I mean, obviously, creatively, you want to be as successful as possible, but yeah. But man, you can't go anywhere. You people are paying, and it. I mean, it has yeah. to get tough after a while. It, it does. I mean, you know, right now I'm at that point that I can still go out. I realized the other day that, you know, it's going to get to a point that, you know, especially when the movie comes out and they're showing the trailers now and then the other sitcoms come out, that it may get a little bit... I just hope that I can keep myself as humble and grounded because I still speak to people. I still take pictures. I still hug people. That's just me. I'm a Southern girl, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, people tell me all the time, well, Coco, you got to be a little bit more untouchable, a little bit more guarded. I'm like, yeah, that's what my team is for. If I get too friendly, just step in between me. Be yeah. my bully for me because I, I can't do it. Well, I can't be mean to people. We have, uh, like on this show, it's a very weird. Uh, we've been here in town for 10 years and have been number one for, I, I mean, literally like years straight. And we're on in, in different cities and what's weird is <clears throat> if you leave like a 50 mile radius from here like you go out if i go out here yeah. everyone everyone knows you but you leave this city or another city mm -hmm. that we're on in no one knows who you are mm -hmm. and and that's almost sort of comforting that yeah. you can go someplace and no one's going to know who you are but if you're a, 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 a someone like kanye west or something like right. that they can't him and kim can't go you nowhere. can't go anywhere now, you can never go can't anywhere. just go to walmart right exactly you know no you know and and that that is one of those things that I just hope that I can still remain grounded. And if, if I have to afford somebody to just do my grocery shopping, then maybe I, hopefully I can afford it. But I still want to have some semblance of a regular life. Yeah. I want my son to have some semblance of a regular life. I don't want him to live in that bubble because I've been in, around some of these industry kids and it's a bubble. They right. don't realize it's a whole world out there. There's a different reality, and I want my son to know both sides. Yeah, they're all driving around in Ferraris and BMWs yeah. and things like that. They're you know, 16 years he's 21 old. 21 months, and his friend has an iPhone. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? You know, so I'm like, okay, but my son does have an iPad, so. <laughs> but it's got Elmo all over it, okay, so it's good. Uh, go see Coco Brown tonight at the Improv, 7.30 and 10.15. Tomorrow, 7.30 and 10.15, or one show on Sunday, it's at uh, 7 o'clock. The Improv is over on the West Bank of the Flats next to Shooter's. And uh, yes. her website, for tickets, let me give you that number first. For tickets, call 216-696-4677. That's 216-696-4677. And Coco's website is Coco Brown, the number four. For life. Forlife.com. Yes, and Coco is C O C O A. Make sure you add that A on the end, otherwise you will get a porn star. And that's <laughs> not what I do anymore. <laughs> I'm sure Progressive loves that because you're in all those yeah, progressive and this commercials. Is the home too. Of progressive. It so is, I need yeah. all the progressive people over at the corporate offices to come see me. Where's Flo? Where's Flo? His sister works for Progressive. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, come see so. the Where's Flo lady. I've been playing the devil out of this commercial. Thank you because you're single handedly putting my child through college. Thank you. Go see uh, Coco Brown at the the improv uh, this weekend. I have to take it. Coco, thank you for thank coming you in. For I appreciate me, it. Thank you for having me, baby. Can I, I want to yes. be on your yacht? Can you go on your yacht later? Let's go. Okay, because uh, I'm ovulating. You just have to come back when it's not 10 degrees here no, like okay. it is I'm for I'm half ovulating. the year. We won't even be on deck. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let me take a quick... Coco, thank you for coming thank in. You, I appreciate it. Very funny lady. Uh, we'll be right back on Rover's Morning Glory. Hang out. Rover's Morning Glory.